are doing a review over chapter eight, right? Chapter eight, photosynthesis. So this is the Pear Deck. All right. And um, we're going to go through first what the big ticket items are. So take a look right here. Okay. And let's read through some of those big ticket items. Hello, welcome. Okay, so I know you're tired. Did you get a chance at least to skim through them? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go through photosynthesis one time, give it a good review, and then if you want, we'll do the photosynthesis song, but we'll back it up right into cellular respiration and do them both. Does that sound good? Remind me when I start to go over the songs with you to make this picture the biggest thing. That way you can see the motions in case you want to go over them later so I'm not itty-bitty. Does that make sense? All right, good deal. So first thing you want to be super familiar with, okay, Come on, computer. First thing you want to be super familiar with is just the structure um, of the chloroplast. And um, you want to remember, and like there was this, yeah, that's fine, the structure of the chloroplast. So you want to remember that those pancake, those green hollow pancakes, those are made out of thylakoid membranes, thylakoid membranes. And what important thing happens on those thylakoid membranes? Do you remember? Yeah electron transport chains. How many electron transport chains do we have in photosynthesis? Do you remember? Two. We have photosystem two and photosystem one, right? So those electron transport chains occur here on these thylakoid membranes. The interior, okay, the lumen, the center, is where we concentrate the hydrogen ions. Remember PQ, PQ, <coughs> sorry is what brings in those um, hydrogen ions. We concentrate them here in the interior. This is a granum, granum. All of these together are grana. And when we concentrate the hydrogen ions inside, then they wanna go back out into the, what do you call the space around that? Not inner membrane, that's mitochondria. Stroma, right? Out into the stroma. And it's out in the stroma that we make ATP and are reduced NADP, right? And if we remember, take some ATP and some reduced NADP to the dark reaction, Kelvin cycle light independent reaction, because that's what we're going to need out here in order to do that. Thinking question besides ATP and reduced NADP, what else are you going to need in that stroma in order to do? dark reaction, Calvin cycle, light independent reaction. Think just for a minute, maybe jot it down. What else is needed for that reaction? Have you got it? Tell me something. Carbon dioxide, right? And what do you fix the carbon dioxide to? Remember its name? You can't trust that person. RUBP, exactly, okay? Good. So I just wanted to remind, do you need the oxygen you generate from the light reaction in order to do the dark reaction? No, it just gets released. Okay. So that's the anatomy of the chloroplast. Tell me, how are you feeling on that? Do you need me to go over that anymore? Do you need a little help on that? Are you good? Okay. Then this is the overview of the different reactions. So we can see the light reaction is going to occur on the thylakoid membranes. You need light energy to excite the electrons. What was the source of the electrons for the light reaction? Water. Remember, what do we do? Remember, water, 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 water. What are we going to do to the water? Break it in half. When we break it in half, we get oxygen and we get electrons. Who did we take the electrons from? The hydrogens, right? That's why you have hydrogen ions. Okay, because it's lost its electrons to the electron transport chain. We want to concentrate. That's the sweep, sweep. We're concentrating the hydrogen ions inside the thylakoid membranes because when they go back out, you will make some what? ATP. Okay. And 
The photosystem two, that's where we make the ATP. And in photosystem one, that's where we reduce um, NADP. And that's why it says right here, you can see the ATP going from the light reaction to the Calvin cycle that occurs out in the stroma and the reduced NADP goes out there. Then you need an influx of carbon dioxide, okay? In order to do this reaction and then you will produce your carbohydrates from that. Okay, big ticket, look at the person next to you. See, are you okay? Is there anything questionable about that? Are you feeling good? All right, so then let's talk about, for a quick minute, we need to talk about light, right? So there's the visible spectrum, you know, of light that comes in. And light, what do we say? Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons. So some waves are big and some waves are small. The smaller the wavelength, the more what? Energy it has. And what do we have that can take in that energy and transform it in some way? Take the light in it. What do you call it? It starts with a P. Pigments, right? Chlorophyll A is a pigment. Chlorophyll B is a pigment. Pigment, Carotenoids. And these different pigments will capture different wavelengths of light. Some will capture really small ones and also some really pretty big ones over here, right? You have all different ones, but for the most part, what wavelength of light do plants have a hard time capturing? Green. So that green light is either transmitted through the plant or it's reflected back off the plant. And that's why plants appear green. Now, is there any pigment that can absorb the green wavelength of light? Yes, who is that? Carotenoid. What do we hear in carotenoid? Orange, right? It's orange, right? That means it can take in all the other colors, green being one of them, but it can't take in these reds and yellows and oranges. It reflects that light back out. Why is that important? Because here comes the sun traveling in waves. We need that wavelength, wavelengths of light to excite our electrons. So it is the pigment that is the conduit of getting the light energy to excite those electrons. Why do we want to excite those electrons? So we can do an electron transport chain. Why do we want to do an electron transport chain? Because we want to make some or we want to reduce some NADP. Okay, you got the big picture? All right, so then we look at the light reaction, okay? So I'm just going to the most complex one because it kind of shows it all. So we, in our song, go water, 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 water. What are we going to do? Break it in half. So what do we get when we break water in half? We get oxygen and we get electrons because it's H2O. We get two electrons and we get two hydrogen ions. That's great. That's the sweep sweep. We're concentrating them. The sunlight is going to help us excite our electrons so they can na 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 get passed through the chain. Partway through the chain, PQ superpower is able to take hydrogen ions from the stroma and bring them inside our pancakes. Bring them into the lumen of the thylakoid membranes. Yay. So I got water's hydrogen ions. PQ contributes hydrogen ions. All of those are going to want to go back out through ATP synthase complex so I can make some ATP. Am I done with those electrons now? No, they get to go for another ride. So I need more sun. I excite them again, and I don't let them cool all the way off this time. I give them hot, and I give them to NADP to reduce some NADP because I need this NADP and I need the ATP in order to do the next step, okay? This is called the light dependent reaction. It is also called non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Non-cyclic because electrons come in via water and out via reduced NADP. Photophosphorylation because it requires what? light and phosphorylation because I'm making what? ATP. There is also non-cyclic photophosphorylation, but it's not very effective. It's kind of like anaerobic respiration. It only makes you ATP. Yes? 
Yes. Can I remind you of what you know in cellular respiration? I don't want to confuse you by doing that. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay, you're going to ask me questions, but I don't do it right. So do you remember when we gathered all our reduced NADs and FADs, take them to the top of the ETC? Uh-uh. And do you remember in class when I went down probably the center row with a couple of pins and we were doing redox, redox? Remember, we were passing the pins along. But every once in a while along our chain, we had some superpower people who could grab hydrogen ions and use that energy to move hydrogen ions from one side of the membrane to another. Because we know proteins in, in membranes can be what? Channels and carriers. So PQ is a carrier just like reductase, reductase, cytochrome oxidase. And it can carry using the energy of the electron that it's holding. It can go, I, I have you electron and here you go hydrogen. And I can move hydrogen from one side of the membrane to another. It's like water behind a dam. It's potential energy that I can use to make ATP. Is that okay? What else on this? All right, here is just another picture of it, but now it's put specifically on that thylakoid membrane so you can kind of see the whole thing. So the water is split here. Here's photosystem two, gets excited, na 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 na. PQ makes some, uh, PQ brings it in, and these hydrogen ions, and I can make some ATP right over here, right? I get the electrons excited again in photosystem one, and this time I use it to reduce some NADP, okay? That is the light-dependent reaction. It cannot happen without light. No light, no reaction, okay? Do plants do photosynthesis in the dark? No, no, they do not. Okay, good, moving on, next step, yes. PQ in photosystem two, it just has the ability to concentrate the hydrogen. That's all it can do. You need ATP synthase complex, ATP synthase, ACE, it means it's enzymatic complex. So it's going to make ATP. That's the only thing it can do as it allows, like, remember the turnstile wee, at Disneyland? When the hydrogen ions come back in, you have to, like, when you go into Disneyland, you really want to get in when it opens, you go through that turnstile. That's what ATP synthase complex does. But when this turnstile goes, it snaps a phosphate onto ADP to make ATP. Are we good on that? All right. Anything else? Are you glad you came today, even though you're tired? You're reviewing? You're okay? All right. Deep breaths. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so here is our Calvin cycle. Here is our Cal. Okay. Stop. Okay, here is our Calvin cycle. It has three parts the fixation of carbon, the reduction of carbon, and the regeneration of RUBP. Okay, so now we have the resources to build something, right? We got to build. What's our ingredient? Where we're going to keep bringing in what? What do we keep bringing in as an ingredient? Carbon dioxide. So if I bring three carbons in, I'm going to take three carbons out, okay? Conservation of matter, right? It's same thing. Now, to help me in the process, I'm going to use RUBP. How many carbons in RUBP? Five. How many carbons in CO2? One. So when you add that CO2 onto RUBP, five plus one is six, right? And per each turn, I mean, technically you can say you do this thing six times, just like we did the Krebs cycle, but we do them in batches. I'm going to do three CO2s a batch. Does that make sense? So I'm going to do five plus one is six, five plus one is six, five plus one is six. When you snap on that CO2 onto RUBP, you're fixing that CO2 to that RUBP. You're taking a gas and making it a what? Solid. You're making it a solid. I now have three six carbon molecules. But it's like I put it on there, but it's not real stable. So they end up, each one of them ends up breaking in half. Okay. And this is a precursor to a half of a glucose. This right here is PGA. It is not quite a half of a glucose yet. It's getting there. It's just not quite there yet. 
All you got to do is put some paint on it. I got to give it some energy. So I'm going to do that by using the ATP. I've right. I had three, six carbons. So if you break them in half, you have six, three carbons, right? Right. Break down to six, C, three. Mm. So then I use some ATP. I give them all a phosphate. I use some reduced NADP, right? And I'm now giving them electrons. And we know electrons equal what? Energy. So I give them phosphate as an energy and I give them electrons. They are now six PGAL. PGAL is half. PGAL is old school name. PGA becomes PGAL, okay? Another newer school name for this is G3P, but they're the same thing. They're a half of a glucose. And I have six of them. And I could say, great, I have six halves of glucose. Super, okay? I'm going to leave now with my six halves of glucose, which would mean I have a total of what? Three glucose molecules. But if I leave right now, the party is what? Over. So since I only brought three carbons in, I'll only take three carbons out. So I take out one of these G3Ps. How many carbons is in it? Three. That leaves me five. Five to keep going. But RUBP is not a three carbon molecule. I have five three carbon. It's a what? Five carbon molecule. So I got to rearrange my Legos a little bit. A little carbon shuffle and shuffle them back into the RUBP shape. And that requires a little bit of what? ATP. I do that whole song and dance again. The fixation, the reduction, the regeneration, and now I have made two three carbon units called G3P. And once I have those, I can use them for cellular respiration and save myself a couple of ATP to get it going. Or I can build some fructose, or I could build some amino acids, or I could build some nucleic acids. I can build whatever I want to from that. That's like my starting point is G3P. So as it is with the song, this slide right here is more... Dun, 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 dun. Where's my mouse? Do you see the mouse anywhere up there? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I can see it now. Here's the part to help you with the song. Okay. I want to just go through the words with you so you know what it means when we actually sing it. Okay. So when I say 3C5, I'm talking about RUBP, plus 3C1 is CO2, makes... 3C6, but they're unstable, so we break down to 6C3. Hmm. That's just PGA, not a lot going for it. So I need to use some ATP, use some reduced NADP on those same 6C3. I take one away, and that's PGAL, G3P. So I get my hand, I say jazz hands. So I can get myself back to 5C3. Those are the good PGLs, G3P. Those, right? There's five of them. But I'm going to use some ATP. I'm going to rearrange my carbons to build 3C5 plus 3C1 makes 3C6. Break down to 6C3. Hmm. Use some ATP, use some reduced NADP on my 6C3, take one away. Now I've taken two away, so what do I have? Glucose, okay? And then you're going to do your jazz hands, 5C3, use some ATP to build 3C5, okay? I'll go through the whole song with you in a bit. I just want to make sure we get all our content down. Okay, questions about this? Yes? Where, where? Show me where you're at. This guy right here? Yeah. He is PGAL. That's just a shortened name for it. Just like ATP is short for adenosine triphosphate. Okay. PGAL. And the more modern name is G3P. Okay. Same thing. Okay. What else? Okay. Uh, okay. So you know that that is the starting point to build whatever you want to in a plant. Okay. Whatever you want to build. Okay. When can things go awry? Well, RUBP. Sometimes a plant, because it's hot outside, has to close the doors. So gases can't get in and out because they're losing too much water. So they close their stomata, the holes in their leaves. 
When they do that, if they're still doing photosynthesis, they're consuming all the CO2. So that reactant is going down and the product oxygen is going what? Up. And that's when RUBP, that's when you can't trust her or him. Because that's when RUBP, instead of hooking up with CO2, because oxygen is so prevalent, it can also bind to oxygen. But when it does that, it does what's called photorespiration. It is neither photosynthesis nor is it respiration. It is 100% bad for a plant. Now, most plants are called C3 plants. They just deal with it. Okay, they just deal with it. It's a loss, okay? But some plants have evolved strategies, especially if you live in a very hot, dry climate where your doors are closed quite a bit because you're afraid of water loss, especially if you're a cactus plant living in the desert where you don't even have a lot of water, it's a bigger problem for you. So there's two evolution, two adaptations we want to talk about, okay? One is basically an anatomical rearrangement inside the leaf where it isolates the dark reaction to these what's called bundle sheath cells, the cells around a vein, the veins of the leaf. Like this is a normal one here on the left. This is your modification. And it has this wreath, and that's called Kranz anatomy. And they do all their dark reactions inside these bundle sheath cells right here. And then it's insulated like a wall of no by all of those mesophyll cells. And a compound called PEP literally is never tempted. You could have a million molecules of CO2 and one molecule of oxygen. It will still only hook up with oxygen. That's the only thing it can bind to. So it will hook on to oxygen and PEP. It's a three carbon unit too. So three plus one is what? Four. So that's why they call it a C4 plant who can do this. It basically escorts the CO2 from here into here where you do your dark reaction. So you call that a partition in space. Okay. It's like, this is where I'm going to do my dark reactions because I can't trust RUBP. And PEP is the only thing that's allowed in here and it's only going to bring in CO2. Okay. Corn is an example of a plant that is a C4 plant. Another strategy, okay, another strategy are cam plants. Cam plants um, will, and like cactus are this and pineapples are this. They say, okay, yeah, I can't do that. I'm going to just fix it at night because I know my doors are always open because it's cool in the night. And I'm going to use PEP and I'm going to fix a bunch of CO2 at night and I'm going to store it up. I'm fixing it. It's a gas to a solid. I can stack it up over in the corner. Then in the daytime, when I have light to do the light reaction, I'll also have a source of CO2 because it'll get released into the cell. And then I will use it then in order to do my light independent reaction. Okay, how do you feel about that? Good, ready to put the two songs together? Okay, so let me, I'll go here. That is the end. And let me make myself bigger. Put myself over here. Hi, come over here. Come here. Are you going to come over here? Okay. And let's see. Big. Are we big yet? We're getting there. Okay. All right. Am I in there? Okay. And then you're far enough. You're more than 10 feet. I'm going to take my mask off so you can hear all the words that I'm going to say. Okay. This is the order in which we're going to do it. We're going to do aerobic respiration. We're going to go right into photosynthesis, and then we're going to do anaerobic respiration. Okay? Good? Here we go. What's the whole thing called? Cellular respiration. What's the first step? Glycolysis. Who does it? All cells. Where do they do it? In the cytoplasm. What do you start out with? Glucose. How many carbons? Six. What are you going to do? Break it in half. How many steps? Ten. How many enzymes? Ten. What are these called? Two pyruvic acids and you reduce some NAD and make some ATP. Two, oh, we have plenty of oxygen. What should we do? Aerobic respiration. What's the next step called? Transition prep. Here we go. And you reduce some NAD and two, acetyl-CoA, put one away. What's the next step called? Krebs cycle. How many times are we going to do it? Two. two. Why? We have two acetyl-CoA's. It's also called the citric acid cycle. You're, oh, and when we do the bit, what are we doing? 
reducing an NAD because we're pulling off a CO2. Okay, here we go. 2 plus 4 is 6. Do the bit, get 5. Do the bit, get 4. Make an ATP, reduce an FAD, reduce an NAD, and 2 plus 4 is 6. Do the bit, get 5. Do the bit, get 4. Make an ATP, reduce an FAD, reduce an NAD, and stop. Gather all your reduced NADs and FADs and take them to the top of the ETC. Uh-uh. na 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 Reductase, reductase, cytochrome oxidase, and you make some ATP. A lot of it, a lot of it, a lot of it, or a lot of it, a lot of it. Who catches electrons at the bottom? Oxygen forming water. Water, 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 water. What are we going to do? Break it in half. What do we get? Oxygen and electrons. Sweep, sweep. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons. And it gets the electrons excited. Ana, na, 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 na. PQ. And you make some ATP. Mm. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons. And it gets the electrons excited. Ana, na, 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 na. Who catches it? NADP forming reduced NADP. Then you... Take some ATP and some reduced NADP to the dark reaction or the Calvin cycle or the light independent reaction. Ready? 3C5 plus 3C1 makes 3C6. Break down to 6C3. Hmm. Use some ATP, use some reduced NADP on your 6C3. Take one away, PGAL, G, 3B, jazz hands. And you're left with 5C3, use some ATP to build 3C5. Makes, break down to 6C3. Mm. Use some ATP, use some reduced NADP on your 6C3. Take one away, glucose, jazz and you're left with 5C3, use some ATP to build 3C5. Stop, pick up your glucose. How many carbons in it? Six, what are you gonna do? Break it in half, how many steps? 10, how many enzymes? 10, what are these called? Two pyruvic acids, and you reduce some NAD and make some ATP. Two, oh no, we don't have any oxygen, what are we gonna do? fermentation. How many choices do we have? Two. You and I make lactic acid. Makes our muscles sore. Plants and yeast make alcohol. Either way, you oxidize your NAD. Now, if that song was in any way difficult for you, I have a whole YouTube video where I just explain every step of all the songs, okay, if that is helpful for you, okay, and that's both of those back to back. Good job. Okay, do you have any questions or anything you need to ask? Do you know that I love you? All right, great. I will see you manana manana. Good job. Good job at home, too.